Hey everyone, today I wanted to do a video talking to you about one of my favorite weapon lights, which is the WML by Inforce. Now this one is attached to my BCM uh, Recce 16. If you want to see a video on that, uh, I'll put a link up here. But I've had this one attached to my rifle for well over a year now. Uh, it's pretty much been a constant companion and it has served me very well. I love the ergonomics of it. Um, I love a lot of the features, so I figure I uh, might as well go ahead and do a video for you guys. First I want to just get some of the specs out of the way. Uh, this one specifically is the HSP or Haley Strategic Partners version uh, which is a 200 lumen light with a battery weighs around 3 ounces from uh, end to end is a just over 4 inches and the bezel diameter is right at 1 inch. Now uh, the 200 lumens will run for about 90 minutes or an hour and a half uh, with the one CR123 battery that is included. Another version they have uh, which I also have is their WMLX, which is a 2 CR123 battery flashlight that runs at 500 lumens for about 2 hours. And again, uh, the 2 CR123s are included when you buy the light. Now this one, with batteries, is an, a full ounce heavier at 4 ounces. It's a little bit longer at about 5.3, 5.4 inches long, and then just a tiny, tiny bit wider around the bezel. Now both of these lights are rated to be uh, waterproof uh, down to 66 feet and uh, you know like I said in my um, Inforce APL review um, you know I, I don't anticipate most people submerging their lights however if you are in a humid environment or if it's raining outside or anything like that you don't have to worry about water actually getting into your light and messing it up. As far as the modes let me go ahead and take this thing off my BCM so I can show you a little bit closer up as far as the modes on this one, this one is a momentary only, uh, which was, I guess, requested by uh, Travis Haley, which, you know, hence why it has the Dragonfly logo on there. So whenever I actuate this button back here, it's going to be a momentary only actuation. Um, I can't just tap it and leave it on and then, or, or do anything like that. It's only going to be on while I'm actually hitting that button. And as you'll see back here, there is a little safety. Basically, it just folds up in, in front of the button, so it prevents you from accidentally actuating it. And then on the other version, this one has both the momentary only option as well as a constant on function. And with a constant on function, you also get a strobe. Now, if you want something that kind of fits the balance in between, they also do make a uh, one cell version similar to the Haley Strategic Partners one. So again, same size, except this one will do the momentary only, where it's only on when you're hitting the button. It will have the constant, where I can just toggle it back and forth. And then with a the constant, if you double tap it, it goes into a strobe. Now, I don't know how well you can uh, tell what the strobe pattern is right now, just watching the video. Um, but it's not your typical strobe pattern. It's actually kind of a sporadic one, which I think is more effective in a, um, a defense context or a tactical context. Um, so that is one thing that I like. But again, that those are the different modes that you'll have with these lights. And now I do want to mention also they do make a IR version as well. So if you're someone who runs nods or you know anything like that, you can use an IR light so it's not going to be visible light. It'll only be visible to someone who has night vision or some other sort of light enhancing optic. Now one of my favorite things about these lights is their ease of use and their form factor. Um, so real quick I'm just going to demonstrate how this mounts. Now I have this mounted to a um, a Haley Strategic Thorn Tail mount, which is attached to a uh, 1913 rail that is attached to the key mod. Since I purchased this mount a while back, they have since come out with a direct key mod version, so you don't have to put on a piece of rail and then put on the mount. You can actually mount it direct to key mod, and I believe, don't quote me on this, I want to say they also have a M-Lock version, um, but I know for a fact they have the 1913 style and they have the key mod style. Um, so basically what I have down here is just one little uh, lug or one little bar that's going to lock into a section of the 1913 and then you have this little screw right here and basically when I have the screw all the way out it allows this section to open and close which allows it to open and close down here which will actually attach it to the rail. Once I have it secured I can screw this thing down which will prevent it from opening or closing so it's going to secure it onto your rail. So, let me just go ahead and show you real quick exactly how I, how I have it mounted here. Um, so basically, I just want to line that up at the point where it's going to be appropriate for me, which is exceptionally difficult to do behind a camera. And then snap it on, 
and then tighten that screw back down. Now in my experience I haven't had any issues uh, with one of these things coming loose or coming off uh, when firing or anything like that. It's always stayed put right where I need it to. And the thing that I like about this uh, Thorntail mount, if I can try to demonstrate this, is it basically kicks that light up into almost a 45 degree angle from the top of the rail. So with my hand stop back here, which is the uh, BCM CAG or kinesthetic angle grip, it, it leaves that light in a perfect spot for my thumb to very easily come over and actuate that light. Um, so I really like that mounting system. It works perfectly for me. I love the ergonomics of it. Um, in my opinion, it's just about as ideal as it gets without having to use a tape switch or anything like that. Now to demonstrate some other mounting options, I actually have a couple other uh, firearms here that I've mounted uh, WMLs to. Uh, so this is my M92 PAP from Century. Um, again, I've typically used the WMLX on this one, and as you can see, I have the rail covers up to a certain point, which will allow me to actually snap on this light, and again, cinch it down. Now, in this position, again, it's in a similar area, but I don't necessarily have the same ergonomics of having it at the 45, but I have it right at the 90, so I can still get on that and actuate it. And then another um, style, or another rifle or firearm, excuse me, that I've actually attached it to, to get this one out of the way, is my Mossberg 590A1. And as you can tell, I have the Magpul furniture on here. And again, I have a 1913 section up here, where it, which allows me to mount the light. Again, it's not quite as ergonomic as having it up at that 45, but it still makes it very easy to get to, and my hand is always in contact with it. Which, which I like if I'm going to run it on a shotgun. So as I've mentioned, I really, really like these lights. However, um, they do have a slight down, uh, downside, which is the fact that the body is made out of polymer. And while that keeps it light, it's not necessarily the strongest material in the world. As you can see here, and I'm sure you've noticed just from me talking about it, um, this the body here is actually cracked. And if I open this thing up, which this is how you insert batteries, which again, this one has two. I'm not sure how well you can see in there, but the crack actually goes all the way down past there on the inside. So uh, would this one still be waterproof? Um, I highly doubt it. And I also want to mention, I'm not the only one that's had this issue. Um, I've talked with the Haas USMC about these lights, and he, he's a big fan of these lights as well. However, uh, I, I believe it was while he was taking classes at Tactical Response, he actually had his WML break. Now, he did tell me that he talked to Enforce about it, and they were very uh, helpful. They were, they were very willing to help. They had him basically send it back, and they replaced it for him. So my understanding is that their customer service is pretty good if you do decide to go with one of these and they do break. Now I will say of the ones that I've seen break, typically they are this longer version. I haven't personally seen any of these shorter versions break. Like I said, I've had this one mounted to this rifle for well over a year. I've had it in below freezing temperatures. I've had it in well above freezing temperatures. Um, I've banged it into plenty of things, whether that be wood or concrete or you know just the ground. You know, you can see that it's kind of scratched up here and there. Um, but I've never had any issues with mine breaking. It's served me exceptionally well. I really, really like this light, but I did want to let you know that that is a thing. Now, um, I also wanted to show you before I actually tried to get this thing replaced, just so you could see exactly what I'm talking of, about as far as it actually breaking. So that one fault aside, I really can't say enough good things about these lights, hence why I have a few of them. I think for the future, I'm probably just gonna stick to the smaller ones, again, because I've had so much luck. And now, um, something I want to talk about is I know a lot of people try to go overboard when it comes to lumens. They want to get as bright of a flashlight as they possibly can. Um, but in my opinion, I really like the 200 lumen version, especially if it's going to be on a gun that you're using for home defense. So like when I have it mounted to a shotgun, it's I actually take it off my rifle here and put it on my shotgun. And then I put it back when I'm not using that shotgun for home defense. The reason is, if I'm indoors, 200 lumens is a lot less likely to give me an issue of self-blinding than something like a 500 lumen light. You know, if you've ever shined a, it, well, first of all, if you've ever been, if you've ever woken up in the middle of the night to use a restroom or anything like that, and you turn on the bathroom light, it's almost blinding and extremely disorienting. Just imagine now, when you're hyper-focused, you have 
you have your eyesight adjusted to the dark and all of a sudden you crack off a 500 lumen light against a white wall or god forbid against a mirror or a picture frame that's going to reflect it right back at you um, it's going to be very difficult to see after that so if you're going to again have one for home defense i highly recommend the 200 lumen if you know you're going to be predominantly doing work outside then by all means do the 500 lumen now as far as the price of these goes, um, the HSP versions or the single cell versions, you can usually find for anywhere between $120 to $130, and then obviously the price is going to go up for there for the, the larger versions or especially the infrared versions. Um, so they're not absurdly priced. They're a lot more reasonable than, say, a uh, Surefire Scout. However, again, um, with a Surefire Scout, I've never seen one of those crack, not to say they can't, but again, they're going to be a little bit more hardy. So anyway, that's about it. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and throw that in the comment section below. I'll try to get back to you as quick as I can. If you guys are interested in more flashlight reviews, then uh, feel free to let me know or give me any recommendations of lights that you like. I'm always looking to put out content that you guys enjoy. But as always, I hope you're able to get something out of this video, and I really appreciate you watching.